Hello my friends and welcome back to the channel. You're watching Project Dark Knight Horror and I am your host, The Dark Knight. Today we're going to be focusing on ghosts, poltergeists and demons. We're going to take a deep dive into the world of the paranormal. It's that time again. So close the door, shut the curtains, and turn off the lights, and go full screen as you get ready to watch. Scariest ghost and demonic videos that will 100% have you calling your mum. Before we begin, I've hidden a secret word somewhere in the video. Your mission if you choose to accept it is to watch the video and locate the word and then let me know what the word is down below in the comment section along with the timestamp and I'll give a shout out to the first three people to complete the task at the beginning of the next video. Thank you. Off the hook. For our first case, we're paying another visit to mechanic and tow truck driver Nick Perry, who owns and runs a YouTube channel called The Hooker. If Nick looks familiar to you, that's because I've featured him multiple times on my channel before, and ever since then, his story has spread over the internet. After contacting Nick, he explained that one night, he was driving down an infamous stretch of highway called Dyer Lane which is near Roseville, California. For all you paranormal fans out there, you should know that Dyer Lane is said to be haunted. And every year, thousands of paranormal investigators and news stations make the journey to Dyer Lane to the narrow tree-lined rural road outside of Roseville to catch sightings of ghosts and to record eerie EVPs on the side of the road where tens of cars have mysteriously crashed. It's very unusual why there's been so many accidents and deaths on this haunted highway. But no matter the reason, the fact still remains that Dyer Lane is very haunted. And one night in the early hours of September 2019 at 2.30 in the morning, and it just so happened to be Friday the 13th, Nick Perry was driving home on Dyer Lane when he saw something that he believes in his heart was the reason and the beginning of all his paranormal problems. As he was driving down Dyer Lane, Nick saw movement from the right hand side of the road and he sent me a picture of a mysterious figure that he says moved straight towards his car. I remember he described it as having some kind of light source for a head. He says it made contact with the car and even though he wasn't hurt and the car wasn't damaged, for the rest of the entire journey home, Nick said he felt like someone was sitting behind him in the back seat. Then, when he got home, that's when all of his paranormal problems started. I featured this information before on a previous video about Nick, but here, for the first time on Project Dark Knight, I'm going to show you some exclusive footage of that night. The following footage you're about to watch comes from Nick's phone as he was driving down Dyer Lane. When he sees something on the right hand side of the road that somehow managed to attach itself and follow him home and what he believes is the reason for all of his problems. Watch. Can't focus. Stupid Dyer Lane. Oh shit! The fuck? Oh shit! The fuck? Oh shit! The fuck? Oh, 
fuck? Yo, I fucking saw something, dude. Oh my fucking god, I'm fucking out of here. What the fuck was that? Fuck this goddamn fucking radio. Holy fuck. Dude, I fucking saw something. After that night, Nick's life was turned upside down and the paranormal took over all aspects of his life and relationship. And what followed next was over a year of fear, paranoia, self-doubt, depression and pain. If you haven't seen my last couple of videos featuring Nick's haunting, then may I suggest watching my Ghost, Poltergeist and Demons playlist to catch up. There you will find all my paranormal case studies, notes, footage and everything that I've covered already to do with the paranormal. Before this all started, Nick came across confident, funny and generally looked content. But then he was harassed by the entity that followed him home. And for over a year, every knock, every bang, every footstep, every paranormal incident chipped away at Nick's personality his mental state and his happiness. And that's the second effect of the paranormal that we never talk about. It's never highlighted, especially for men. You see, being scared is what comes to mind when you think of ghosts. But to me, there's a much more important side effect of a continuous haunting. And that is the person's mental state. You see, when a victim is exposed to constant paranormal activity, big or small, their confidence and personality takes a nosedive. Then comes the sleepless nights which leads to depression. And after a period of time, a shell of the former person is all that remains. And this is exactly what's happening to Nick. And as a carer of mental health myself, I've learned to see the signs. And so he packed up and moved into a new home with his wife and pets and everything seemed better. There was no more paranormal activity, no more self-doubt or sleepless nights, and slowly but surely, Nick started to heal. After watching Nick's haunting this past year, I've noticed one thing, that Nick is quite funny. Watch the difference in his demeanor when there's no paranormal activity and he's happy. Check it out, what? We're in our fucking new place. Well, let's do a tour of the, our new rich and famous house in Citrus Heights, California. Here's the, here's the living room where we will live and stuff and things and such. Okay, carry on. Moving on, moving on, here we are. Uh, this is the dining room where we will be dining and, and things. There's my wife. Where she belongs in the kitchen. I'm just kidding. Here's where all the magic happens, right here. No. Yep, right there. And then we have this room. It's a spare bedroom with a sliding glass door, which is pretty cool. In case I need to sneak out from my wife uh, when she wants to kill me. And then we have this room. I don't know how to control the light. Let me figure this out. And it has this uh, nifty paint up called the Fox. The Fox. 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 Oh. Fox. Oh. Show. And then we have. What is this? I don't even know what this is. Well, that was, it's a cupboard, if you will. They call them cupboards in England. This is a cupboard. In America, it's a closet. Then we have another long closet. I don't want to come out of the closet. Oh, shit. I can't open it. Baby, I don't know how to open it. I'm scared. I'm scared. Let me out. Let me out. Oh. Baby, the garage is in here. Then we have the master bedroom, because I am the master, and this is where I will bed. You call masturbate? And masturbate. Yes, that's what I call the master bedroom. So we can masturbate. I just wanted to highlight this side of Nick because it's been a hard year for him and it was nice to see him and his wife so happy. But alas, unfortunately, all good things must come to an end. And slowly but surely, the same strange thing started happening again in his new home. Watch.
fucking happening again. I'm not even at home. I had to pull over because my nose just started fucking leaking. Why is it fucking doing this? I'm not even at the house anymore. I just want to stop. <clears throat> I think it's starting again. Or it never went away. I don't know. God damn it, everything was going good. I don't know what to do. And last night, <clears throat> when we were asleep, I woke up to. fucking noise in my house and it sounded like something was walking through my house, my new house. <sighs> fucking getting dizzy. I know I wasn't the only one that heard it because my dog. And that's not just all. Where is it? It's my fucking tooth right here. See that? I never had any tooth pain. It just fell out. I wasn't even eating nothing. That was yesterday. I thought I got rid of it. Everything's going so fucking good. My wife is happy. I was I was happy. I love the new place. So as you just saw and heard, as soon as the activity started again, so too did Nick's health problems. When it comes to the paranormal, ghosts and demons and other such entities can make you very ill. Some entities can give you back problems and others can make you depressed. Some cases are found that the homeowners have been hospitalized and their doctors couldn't find the reason why. But when asked, the victim would say that they could feel their insides being twisted. And this is how some of the more violent, more evil entities get their kicks and energy. Because a human being is basically a battery, constantly creating energy. These entities need and crave energy. They feed off it. And I think there's a high probability that this is what's happening to Nick. His nosebleeds and teeth loss is a sure sign. The following footage you're about to watch shows and highlights the paranormal activity getting stronger day by day. Watch. Ooh, man. I'm <laughs> just kidding. It's just a fucking vape. <laughs> I've been here for two days by myself because my wife is at work. I'm on vacation. So, but I've been hearing things. Uh, first, I was hearing just something like stuff moving around or, you know, stuff like that. You know, it's normal house noises. And then voices it's kind of freaking me out though you know that is that is gone
When I was seven years old, my father killed himself. He did it in the house that I was born in, that I lived my whole childhood and teenage years in. Um, it's more than that, which freaks me out because I don't want it to be more than that, you know? I don't want to know that I'm being fucking possessed or something, you know? I'm being fucking possessed or something, you know? I felt something. I keep fucking hearing shit. What is it? What is this fucking closet door? Stop. Hey, hey, stop. Going over some of my videos, and um, well, I a skeleton behind me moved its fucking head. That's just a Halloween thing my son got last year for Halloween, and he left it over here because he didn't have the space for it. I know it's not haunted. He bought it from a fucking Halloween store <clears throat> but something I did so I found a, a church that agreed to come and bless my house and me um, they requested that I don't take any video of them or mention the church's name or location or anything like that because they don't want it to be glorified or publicized or whatever. They're not in it for fame or money. They are in it because this is what they do. So they requested that I don't film them while they're here but I need to have it done my wife is just too happy I cannot let her down I can't I've never seen her I've never seen her this happy I just I want this to be over I don't want my wife to sit here
Seems like my wife has been working every single day. How many days have I been at home? And after the blessing was complete, Nick said that he felt different. Also, he said he felt all the negative energy from inside the house disappear. But unfortunately, for some reason, it didn't last. And exactly one week later, the negative activity started again. Watch. Uh, I don't know if anyone ever noticed that. I mean, it took me a minute to notice it, so I just wanted to show you what it was, you know. Babe. Bud, what are you doing? What's going on, Maxies? What are you doing, bud? You want to... Oh, man. I just got fucking chills. Hella bad, like I feel it in my head. something at the door again. What's the gun gonna do? Oh, shit. What the fuck? Dude, what the fuck, man?
Who's in my garage? Whoever it is needs to fucking leave. Oh, fuck that shit. I'm fucking out of here. I'm leaving. I'm out. Oh, where's my fucking keys at? So as you just saw, even though Nick's house received a blessing from two priests, the paranormal activity still dwells. The house was quiet for a week though, but exactly seven days later, the activity returned again, and with a vengeance. I'll be keeping a close eye on Nick's situation, and as soon as I hear anything, I will let you know. So, in the meantime, why don't you jump on over to Nick's YouTube channel, it's called The Hooker. The name is on screen. Nick and his wife have really gone through some dark times lately and I know that if you jump on over to their channel and show some love and support, that will really go a long way in cheering them up. And when you get there, drop them a comment or two, but don't forget to tell them the Dark Knight sent you. Thank you. Order for win. For our next case, we're quickly checking back in with Win over on TikTok. Win lives in a haunted house with his wife and kids and their beloved dog. He mainly posts over on TikTok every month or so. He doesn't have a great amount of content, but the videos he does post gets people talking. Some people believe his haunting is fake, while others believe it's real. Whatever you believe, you can't deny that his videos are interesting. Last month, Wynn captured something very creepy on camera. Most of Wynn's viewers believe that the creepy shadow figure he captured on camera is in fact the entity that dwells in his home. If that was true, then that would mean that Wynn has an attachment and not just a haunting. Watch. Kitchen, like the kitchen area. It is. They're real quiet about it. I would not go down. Oh, it's cold right here. It's the other way. Hello? I'm not going up there. Definitely not going back there. Oh, wow. It, it is really cold right here. What was that? Oh. I don't think it's happy we're here. Oh, holy dude, there's as Wynn walks back and forth through the dark corridor, he mentions how cold the area is. And as he walks towards the side exit, something dark can be seen in one of the corners. Then, as he comes back, he hears three knocks coming from the wall. And that's when we get to see 
what was lurking in the corner. A shadow figure can be seen hunched in the corner and as Wynne tries to get a better look, all of a sudden you hear a weird low voice say, go away. And that's exactly what Wynne does. Then, two weeks ago, Wynne uploaded another video. He was at home in the office playing only up when he kept seeing something in his peripheral vision on the left-hand side of the door. Watch. Something is watching me. If you've had the feeling, you know what I'm talking about. I'm playing only up in my office. Something keeps passing by this window. I'm gonna, I just propped up the phone here and I'm gonna play. If you're walking by my office, I want you to knock it off. <laughs> Holy. Is that you making all that noise back there? This thing's always closing doors. You need to get out. Dan, will you knock it off, please? <laughs> you gotta get out. You're, you're gonna lock yourself. You gotta get out. You're, you're gonna lock yourself in the laundry room again. You're not leaving. You're not gonna. Just like he says, something dark passes the door as Wynn plays online. He immediately pauses his game and turns around. But. When he looks, there's nothing there. Then, laughing can be heard coming from the dining area, and so Wynne gets up and checks it out. And that's when something starts opening and closing the fridge in the background. He tries to get the entity to stop, but that only makes it worse. Then, something is pushed off the counter, and after the door slams shut, three bangs can be heard in the background. If this haunting is as real as it looks, then I'm worried for what the future holds for Wynne. This entity seems to be getting stronger and more bolder day by day. When the door closes, Wynne walks towards it, and that's when the entity opens the door and shows itself. It's now getting more bolder and more active, and what scares me is the way Wynne speaks to it. You see, Instead of being confident and demanding the entity to leave and walking up to it and showing no fear, Wynne now has become scared, timid and is saying things like knock it off and please. And of course the entity senses the change in Wynne and just casually closes the door. I know when dealing with the paranormal it can be scary but you really must stay strong if you don't want the entity to take over. If this is your first time seeing Wynne's haunting, then I highly suggest that you jump on over to his account and check out his haunting from the beginning. Or, if you want, jump on over to my channel's homepage and click on the Ghost, Poltergeist and Demons playlist to watch all of Wynne's haunting and many other victims of the paranormal. And, just as usual, the second I see or hear any updates from Wynn, I will let you know. It's my job after all. Thank you. The Haunting of El Ossestan Conimigo Our next case centers around a Mexican man called Elos, who, up until a few months ago, 
was part of a paranormal investigation team. His troubles first started when he and his colleagues took part in a paranormal investigation in a graveyard. Elos lives alone and that night after the investigation as he was getting ready for bed he felt a strange sensation on the back of his neck which gave him goosebumps all over. Now being used to living by himself he knew something was wrong when all of a sudden he felt as if someone else was in the room with him. You see, it turns out that night, after provoking the spirits of the graveyard, he knew that the sensation he was feeling could mean only one thing, that something had followed him home. And over the following weeks and months, the attachment between Elos and the spirit world would get more intense, and the paranormal activity that started in his home grew from strength to strength and got more and more scary. Watch. Vamos a escuchar un golpe duro por allá en la sala, entonces decidí grabar porque hace días que se viene presentando cosas extrañas en el apartamento, son las cuatro, cuatro y cuarto. Esto viene sucediendo hace como una semana ya. Pero la verdad se me hace muy extraño. Se me hace muy extraño que esté pasando cosas así. Oh, oh. No lo puedo creer. No lo puedo creer, miren. ¿Qué está pasando? Dios, llevo una semana en estas. Vieron que se movió, se movió. Esto viene sucediendo hace una semana, hace diez días, sino que no he querido grabar, pero ya las cosas se tornan bastante serias. Ya está pasando muy seguido, entonces me preocupa, pero si ¿sí vieron cómo se movió eso. ¿Escucharon? ¿Escucharon? Hay un golpe raro. El celular alcance a tomar ese audio porque está en la otra habitación. Pero todo es muy extraño porque yo no he tocado ese piano hoy. Me 
The following day, Elos heard the keyboard playing from another room, so again he took out his phone and started recording for evidence. When he went to see, he found that the keyboard had been turned on. So he turns it off and walks away, but just a few seconds later, he hears the keyboard again. It's like the spirit is taunting him, and once again, he finds the keyboard has been turned on. This freaks him out a bit, and once again, he turns it off, but this time, he pulls out the plug. But the spirit isn't through with him yet, and later that night, at 3.25 in the morning, he heard something moving around from the other room. Watch. Son las tres y veinticinco. Se escuchan golpes en la sala. Se escuchan cosas. No puedo dormir. Van a ser casi las cuatro de la mañana. Dios mío, ayúdame, Dios mío. ¿Quién está ahí? Dios, ¿qué es eso, Dios? Ayúdame, Dios, ayúdame. Dios mío. ¿Quién está ahí? La cortina se movió. La cortina se movió. Uy, Dios, Dios. Dios mío, qué fue eso. Qué fue eso, Dios. As Elos lay in bed, he says it was impossible to sleep because he could hear something moving through his home, and the thought of it entering his bedroom while he slept filled him with fear. So, with a prayer on his lips, Elos went to check it out, and the moment he raised the curtain, he instantly regretted it. There was something in the bathroom trying to open the door. So very bravely, he opens the bathroom door and is faced with a closed shower curtain. Now, we've all seen the horror movies, right? When they quickly open the shower curtain to check if anyone's hiding there. Well, Elos didn't even get the chance because when he asked who's there, something pushes out the shower curtain. And then, the bathroom door slams shut. Elos then shows some remarkable strength because he goes back to check it out. And while praying, he moves the shower curtain. But of course, there's no one there. 
The clip ends with Elos breathing very fast and heavily as he turns from side to side, wondering where it is. This is what real fear sounds like. En el nombre de Jesús te ordeno que te vayas. En el nombre de Jesús ordeno que te vayas. No tienes derecho de estar aquí. Ordeno que te vas. Ordeno que te vas en el nombre de Jesús. Esta vez eh, no estoy solo, esta vez estoy con mi novio que por fin decidió venir a acompañarme, pues estaba asustada debido a todas estas cosas que están pasando. ¿Dónde es eso, amor? Me cocí. Yo voy solo, amor. No, yo no. Prende la luz, prende la luz. En el nombre de Jesús, manifiéstate. Nombre de Jesús, manifiéstate. Vaya para el cuarto, amor. ¿Qué fue eso? ¿Estás viendo, amor? ¿Estás viendo? Manifiéstate en el nombre de Jesús, te ordeno que te manifiestes. Yo creo que es un vacío ahorita, ¿no? Una cocina. So on this night, his girlfriend Clara finally agreed to stay over and witness the activity firsthand, and she quickly regretted that decision. She's always known how bad it sounded from Elos, but to actually be there in the moment was a reality check for her. And at that moment, she told Elos that she started to feel sick and very tired, like all her energy was drained. It got so bad that she didn't stay the night with Elos. Instead, she said her goodbyes and left a few minutes later, leaving Elos all alone again to deal with this terror. It's a glass. It's a glass. Look, all the cajones are open. Look, all the
ya estaba durmiendo porque estos días tengo que madrugar y acabo de escuchar que alguien me susurró fuerte al oído una voz horrible entonces eso me despertó aparte de eso también estoy sintiendo pasos estoy sintiendo ruido y bueno yo espero que esta noche sea muy tranquila ¿qué fue eso? Dios mío ¿qué fue eso? me voy a levantar una cosa No sé si No sé si salir porque estoy asustado Todavía se escuchan voces de, de la gente Porque está muy temprano Estoy temblando Estoy nervioso, súper nervioso para temblar les juro que estoy temblando gente estoy temblando temblando mucho ay Dios mío que susto this night must have been a literal nightmare for Elos not only while lying in bed did something whisper in his ear but also on either side of the bed, he could hear and feel heavy footsteps. But things went from bad to straight up nightmare mode, because, just as he was finished saying, I hope it's a calm night, his bed sheet violently gets pulled off him, leaving him exposed, vulnerable and shaking. A few nights pass by with no activity, and Elos starts to let his guard down. But you should know by now, especially if you've been watching my videos, that it's normal for paranormal activity to spike and then dip sporadically. But that's only because it's in a resting phase. And as sure as the sun sets and the moon rises, so too does the activity. The resting phase can last a couple of days like in this case, or a couple of months like in others. It all depends on the entity and how strong it is. So two days later, Elos was woken up again. But this time, he finds that the power in his home is not working. He tries multiple switches to no avail. So he looks out of the window onto the street to see how far the blackout has spread. But lo and behold, as he looks out onto the street, it turns out that it's only his home that has no electricity because as he looks out onto the street the road and all the other houses all have power ya varias noches que no sucedía nada pero pero otra vez estoy viendo Está sin energía, mi apartamento está sin energía. Pues al momento no se ve nada extraño, pero les juro que yo escuché unos golpes. Miren que se ve energía. Sí, 
que es lo que parece todo está tranquilo Elos is about to come face to face with something absolutely terrifying. And it explains why the power in his home isn't working. Watch. Ay, con mi cocina, Dios. Ay, con mi cocina, Dios mío. So there, in the darkness of his home, as Elos moves through his house, his eyes are still adjusting to the dark, and he sees something that he doesn't recognize. He stares at it for a second or two, not knowing what it is. But slowly, as his eyesight starts to adjust to the darkness, he realizes what he's looking at. He's standing a mere couple of meters away from the entity. And as fear and terror sets in, he runs away from it. Personally, I would have left the building. But fear makes people do weird things. Suddenly, he hears a howl coming from the entity. He starts praying to God to give him strength and not to show fear. Then, after a couple of minutes, he slowly makes his way back to see if it's still there. But, when he checks, he finds that the entity has disappeared. The haunting started with knocks and bangs, and it slowly started to escalate day by day and week by week. I've always tried to highlight the dangers of messing around with the paranormal. So you can see firsthand what happens if you poke around with forces that you don't fully understand. After coming face to face with the entity that's been haunting him, Elos left his home that night and he deleted his account. I guess he wanted to wipe the slate clean and walk away from anything to do with the paranormal. Elos still has a YouTube channel, but 
At the moment, he's only uploaded one video on there, but I'll still be keeping an eye on it in the future. If there's any Spanish viewers watching this that knows any information about Elos Estan Conmigo or what exactly happened to his account, then send me an email or drop me a comment down below. I'll be keeping my eyes open for any future uploads from Elos. So when and if I find out, I will let you know. Thank you. Dear Mum, For our next case today, we're going to be watching an account about a young woman called Saviour who moved in with her boyfriend into their new home. Being so young and just recently leaving the family, Saviour's mum asked her to send some videos of the new house because, at the time, her mum was too ill to leave because of COVID. There were a lot more videos from Saviour to her mum covering everyday topics like food, university, her boyfriend, and growing up. But for this video, we're going to skip forward to when strange events started occurring to Saviour. The following six videos are all from the same night, but they've been broken down into smaller chunks for viewing purposes. Saviour is recording a video diary to her mum when suddenly, from somewhere in the home, you hear a loud bang. Watch. Hey mom, I know you said to send you more videos, so here I am. I miss you guys. I miss California, but Ohio's good, I guess. <laughs> kind of boring. Um, Eli is working really late tonight, so I'm here by myself for a while. Wanted to show you the new puzzle I'm working on. Maybe when I'm done with it, I can send you this. Um, mom, I gotta go. Hey mom, sorry about that last video. I have no idea what that was. I think maybe my book fell off of my shelf, but who knows? Um, I just wanted to show you my room. This is the bedding I got. This is the duvet that I grabbed from the house. Um, there's all my books that I could not fit on that shelf. Hey mom, as you probably saw in the last video, some really weird stuff has been happening around here. Like I keep hearing like random noises. I don't want to freak you out. I mean, I'm not that worried about it. I mean, it's kind of freaky. But anyways, on a lighter note, I wanted to show you the kitchen. Um, there's the oven. It's kind of whack, but... I put the nice towel that you sent me. Thank you. So on this night, three years ago, while her boyfriend Eli was at work, some strange, scary things happened to Saviour. First off, she heard that loud bang, which she said was a book falling off the shelf. Then she hears a loud thump on the bedroom wall and then... While talking to her mum in the kitchen, the kitchen lights start flashing off and on. Mom, the power went out. I don't want to freak you out anymore. I think, I think it's back. So Saviour tells her mum that she thinks it's back, meaning whatever has gotten her so upset isn't the first time she's encountered it. Then she looks up and sees someone or something outside the window on the back porch. Then whatever it is outside the door starts banging on it. Saviour zooms in on the back door 
and you see the eyes again, blinking in the darkness. Warning, the following video can and will upset some people. So please understand that Project Dark Knight is showing this for education and safety purposes. Possible trigger warning imminent. Whatever is outside Savior's home somehow manages to open the back door. Savior runs out of the room and up the stairs and hides in a cupboard. A couple of seconds later, you hear loud, heavy footsteps as the intruder runs upstairs looking for her. Savior was so scared and upset that she found it impossible to keep quiet. Suddenly, the worst possible thing happens. The cupboard door that Savior's hiding behind is pushed open and you can see a dark shadow watching her. Just before the camera cuts out, the intruder moves towards her and Savior makes an awful scary sound as she screams at the intruder. After this account surfaced, the community went crazy. Some people thought this was an ARG while others thought it was real. As for the account, there's absolutely no information about what happened to Saviour and there were no more posts or uploads. Saviour just disappeared. So was it a stalker, an ex-boyfriend, her current boyfriend or was it actually really paranormal? So if you're watching this and you know anything about the case, no matter how small, then please let me know down below in the comment section. Thank you. If you've seen something scary, creepy or amazing and you've captured something paranormal on camera, or maybe you're a paranormal investigator and you need some help to get your content out there, or you might be unlucky enough to live in a haunted house and you need some help and advice because you think you're all alone. Well, you're not. Project Dark Knight Horror is here for you. So, send in your videos, clips, links, photos, stories, ideas and more to Project Dark Knight. The email is on screen. Thank you. The Demon Downstairs For my last case, I'm covering an account that's quite old and has been featured many times on different paranormal channels for years. But just like it was back then, even now in 2023, the case is still a mystery and no one knows what truly happened to the uploader. Before we begin, I have to warn you that this case is demonic in nature and throughout the case I will present scary, shocking and demonic video evidence and the background information that I've uncovered. Also, I've managed to find some unseen footage. Some of you who've been watching Project Dark Knight from the beginning will know that when I first started, I featured this case, but now I feel I have a much better grasp and understanding of the paranormal and I'm a lot better at editing and presenting the facts. So if you'll indulge me then I'll try not to scare you too much as we take a deep dive down the paranormal rabbit hole as we investigate the haunting of El Franco Andres V. Warning, 
The following case you're about to watch is one of the most terrifying paranormal cases I've ever researched. And the following videos and background information feature footage about a demonic entity that haunted a young man, hurting him while he slept. And as a result of watching and listening to this demonic case, possible night terrors and the fear of being alone in your own home, especially at night, is a real possibility. You've now been warned, so proceed with caution. Today, we're going to be taking another look at the haunting of El Franco Andres V. TikTok user El Franco Andres V set up an account and started uploading scary content, complaining that strange and unexplainable things were happening in his home. He would wake up in the middle of the night hearing footsteps running away from his bed and down the stairs. So one night, he decided to pretend to sleep, to try and catch whatever was running around in his home. He lied in bed, facing the wall like he always did, and he pretended to sleep, always listening out for the telltale sounds of footsteps coming towards his bed. He went on to say in his account that one moment, he was laying in bed, eyes closed, pretending to sleep, when all of a sudden, he heard two loud footsteps, not coming up the stairs. It was already in his room, directly behind him, but he didn't move. Then, he said he felt something cold and wet on his right shoulder. He felt something drip down his back, and he couldn't help it, and he had to turn around. Just then, at that moment, he said he wished that he never looked, because, according to Al Franco Andres V, as he turned his head, he said all he saw was black hair. Well, as you can imagine, Al Franco screamed, and that's when the thing let go and ran out of the room. Well, that night, as you can imagine, he didn't stay in his apartment or sleep. In the morning, he noticed on his right shoulder something was hurting and so he took a look and saw bite marks in the mirror. Ever since that night, El Franco Andres V started recording and he uploaded this footage to social media. But there's something else you all need to know. During this case, all of a sudden, El Franco disappeared. Then another shocking thing happened. All of his social media accounts, his YouTube, TikTok and Instagram, all were deleted and no one has heard anything from him or about him since February 2021. ¿Qué? Si está aquí en el baño, enciende de nuevo el agua. ¿Hay alguien más que tú aquí en esta casa? Mi vida corre peligro. Está de huella. Aquí no hay... Parece que volvió. 
poltergeist activity is recorded, which is an everyday occurrence for El Franco. Listen again to the lampshade as it moves. It doesn't just move or sway like in some other videos I researched. No, with this case, you can actually hear the impact of the hit every time it moves, like there's an invisible hand hitting it. El Franco didn't know it at the time, but things were about to get a lot more darker. What happens next is absolutely terrifying. Watch. Solo acá del baño, como no me dijeron, eh, traigo una vela y un espejo y voy a poder hablar con ella. Amiga, por favor, te pido que me dejes solo. Te lo pido, por favor. ¡Ah, con... This was the first time that the entity showed itself and answered him. And after this exchange, the activity between El Franco and Res V and the entity got worse. The entity wouldn't leave him alone and started harassing him every day. Watch. Hay ruido en el primer piso. Está de... Did you see that? Well, let me play it again for you, but in slow motion. There's something dark and disturbing about the way the entity looks, especially with the long black hair that covers most of its face. The bit of the face that you can see doesn't look right as well. Its skin is either charred or blackened somehow. And don't get me started on the eyes. Voy a seguir este consejo que me dijeron con el robo, así que vamos a ver. No, vamos a alejar un poquito. Vamos a mirarlo acá, no vamos a caer a ver si va a suceder algo. One of El Franco's viewers suggests that he plays with the entity using a balloon and if the entity interacts with the balloon then he'll be able to tell if the entity's soul is good or bad. Personally I think the theory is flawed and all the experiment can show is interaction between the two but it's still amazing watching El Franco throw the balloon down the stairs and after hearing footsteps Amazingly, the balloon floats back to him. Ah, con hey, hey. Ah, uh, no way. Ah, con tu madre. Me está golpeando la puerta. Things get more and more creepy from here on out. As he's playing with his cat and recording it, all of a sudden, you hear a sound 
by the door and even the cat's head snaps around to look at it. El Franco runs after it, but, as usual, the entity disappears. Then, he's back in his room, and he can hear the entity right outside the door. Suddenly, the entity knocks twice on his door. He's just about to open the door, when suddenly, you hear a disembodied voice say in Spanish, Do not open. Just then, he hears another whisper in a different voice say, Baja, meaning, come down. Se encendió la luz de abajo y está sola la casa. Voy a bajar. Whatever this is that turned on the lights and the music wants our Franco to go downstairs. And so he gets out of bed, but as he's making his way downstairs, the light in the bathroom turns on. Just then, the sound system's volume increases, as if it's trying to get our Franco's attention. And so he starts walking downstairs again, but is stopped a second time by the bedroom door slamming shut. Just then, he hears a female whisper in Spanish, don't go down. So what do you think is happening in El Franco's home? Was the entity trying to hurt him or warn him? Was this entity a demon or a harbinger of doom? And was there one entity or more? Remember the shower clip. Mi vida corre peligro. The entity answered yes, and after this, El Franco Andres V disappeared. This was the night that El Franco got bit by the entity while he slept. This is what was recorded. While El Franco slept, this smoke or mist appeared all around him, and even the dog didn't notice. This was the moment that El Franco said he felt the entity behind him. The dog gets scared and runs away, leaving El Franco by himself. Then, the duvet gets lifted by something invisible and slowly gets pulled off the bed. Now, it's normal for people to question the integrity of this haunting and these videos. So, before El Franco Andres V disappeared, he went as far as to upload the raw footage from his phone, the unedited version, which shows the ghost girl appearing at the bottom of the stairs.
So let me know what you guys think in the comments. After this, El Franco Andres V disappeared and all of his social media platforms were deleted. Even the ones that didn't include any of these videos. And ever since then, no one has seen or heard from El Franco Andres V ever again. If you've made it to the end, then I salute you. You proved that you're a true fan of horror. So remember, if you're interested in ghosts, poltergeists and demons, cursed objects, haunted houses and random autica, animal attacks, serial killers and strange dark mysteries, then Project Dark Knight Horror is the channel for you. If you like what you see and you think I deserve it, then can I kindly ask you to press the subscribe button for me. It's absolutely free for you and just with the click of your finger you can help my channel grow and the bigger the channel the more videos I can make for you. This year my goal is to hit half a million subscribers so I really could use some help. Before you go I have three more quick things to talk about. First off if you're a fan of horror why not join Project Dark Knight on my private Facebook group. There you'll be in great company. We have lots of different people from lots of different backgrounds from lots of different countries but we all share one thing in common and that is our love for horror. So click the link in the description section and join the group and let's have some fun. Next if you didn't know I've designed some merch. I've combined my love for horror with my love for all things urban and what you see is the finished product. So if you want to grab a piece of Project Dark Knight history the link is down below. And remember they are original to the channel and have been designed by myself the Dark Knight and who knows when my channel blows up these could become collector items. So grab them while you can. The link is down below. And lastly I'd like to thank my lovely Patreons who have been a valuable member of Project Dark Knight. Some of the names on this list have been with me from the beginning. These names are Dawson Lip, Turtle Chief Nine, Andrew M. Gross, Laura Rohde, Countess Monette, George Lopez, Greasy Cox, Donna Sayers, D. Michael Smith, Catherine Murphy, Trumpet, Anna, Elizabeth Bielek, KJ Majid, Honey Badger, Charlie X24, Judah, Christy Santisteven, Seth J, Chris, Randy Crates, Anthony Sornoff Unwin, Jacob Wilk, Cynthia Glover, Pup Skits, and Eddie E. I just want to say a massive thank you to you all. Some of you have been with me since the beginning, and it's because of people like you who push me and always send me messages about my health and well being. And that really keeps me going. I know I haven't always been consistent, my friends, but I'm really going to try harder. I really can't thank you all enough. Your generosity means so much. And I know you know this already, but it's thanks to people like you who keep the engines running at Project Dark Knight. And always remember, you've been watching Project Dark Knight Horror, and I am the Dark Knight. Signing off. Peace. Don't ever laugh as the hearse goes by For you may be the next to die They wrap you up in a big white sheet From your head down to your feet They put you in a big black box 
and cover you up with dirt and rock.